Matthew's Messages. April 11, 2013. North Korea, Pope Francis, the Vatican, Visualization, Homosexuality. With loving greetings from all souls at this station, this is Matthew. First we want to quell any anxieties about North Korea's missile activity. Reared to expect the same adulation and subservience North Koreans gave his father, Kim Jong-un is bereft of common sense and more so, a sense of security in his leadership position. It is not that his rhetoric is bluff, but without knowing how to govern his country, he shows to its citizens and the world the military might at his command. Depending on other national leaders' reactions to his questionable motives in positioning the missiles as he has, he may decide to launch one or more of them. If so, he will be embarrassed by their failure to function, thanks to the intervention of your space family's technology. If that is the outcome, it's an unknown as to how he would save face, so we say that it would be in everyone's best interests to replace sanctions with discussions. Many have asked us to comment on Pope Francis, who is in millions of thoughts around the world, and we are happy to do this. No. His humility is not an act and he cannot be the salvation of the Catholic Church. He has not been cloned, and he won't be. The Illuminati's cloning centers have been shut down by volunteers from other civilizations who are living among you. Like his colleagues in the Vatican and some individuals outside, Pope Francis knows of situations hidden from public view, and he has the innate goodness to feel compelled to end the most ungodly the international headquarters of Satanism in the bowels of the Vatican. As the light keeps intensifying, that end will indeed come, but it remains to be seen if the Pope has the ability to defy those who are dead set against letting the world know that this diabolical situation ever existed within the Vatican walls. Other information they do not want revealed is that they have kept hidden the ancient records that show the crucifixion and resurrection and other parts of the Bible are fabricated and other sections of the records were strategically omitted. They don't want the world to know that God's rules were devised by early church leaders to control the masses and acquire personal wealth, and later other dogma were added to serve the opulent style in which residents of the Vatican have lived. They also want to keep it in their massive fortune in our treasures stolen during World War II. Pope Francis has the moral courage to try to disclose that information, but again, given the strong opposition, it remains to be seen if he can manage to do so. When those truths emerge, we fervently hope that the religiously devout will have absorbed enough light to realize that Church's multitude of good works are based in spirituality, not religious dogma. A reader recently wrote to my mother about something in our last message, and her comments in summary are, You said that negative thoughts and feelings about an abhorrent situation keep it going. How is it even possible to have any positive thoughts about this? She was writing about human trafficking, but our reply pertains to all abhorrent situations in your world. The several issues we spoke about in our last message are of controversial nature, there is no controversy whatsoever about situations like human trafficking, sex slavery. Although soul contracts and karma are involved, the point we wish to address is the writer's question. Prior messages have included our recommendation to visualize earth in golden white light because it literally brings to light terribly disturbing conditions that formerly were hidden from public knowledge. Only when they are exposed can action be taken to end them, and start healing the traumas they have caused. You cannot unknow your knowledge of despicable conditions, and never would we suggest that you try to bury it, ultimately that would adversely affect body, mind and spirit. Rather, we urge you to visualize earth immersed in golden white light, then see it start to slowly rotate with happy faces appearing, and send forth feelings of love. The energy of your image, loving sensations and intention will go out into the world. God's energy distribution system, you could call it, assures that light love energy from all sources off and on planet reaches the souls who most need it, those who are oppressed and their oppressors. Your energy along with light from myriad other sources is what will end all kinds of oppression in your society. Now then, we wish to address a statement in a recent message. 
Eventually everyone will know that homosexuality is an advanced stage of spiritual growth wherein feminine and masculine energies are more balanced than in heterosexual persons. A complex situation stated in such brevity begs explanation, especially since homosexuality is one of the divisive issues plaguing your world, and I have asked my mother to copy the part in a book that is relevant. Although it also includes information that pertains to residents of Nirvana, Earth Spirit World, we think you will find all of it enlightening. The following excerpt from the chapter Relationships in Matthew, Tell Me About Heaven was transmitted early in 1994. Matthew, can homosexual partners here continue their unions in Nirvana if they want to? Yes. Mother, homosexuality is not understood on Earth, and this is a good context in which to explain it. Homosexuality is an evolutionary stage of the spirit even more than an aspect of the physical being, and it is not to be condemned or honored any more than any other physical or spiritual stage of development. Remember, we are dealing with cumulative souls here, not single personages. Within each cumulative soul are perhaps as many as thousands of lifetimes of experiencing as male, female and androgynous beings in both incarnate and discarnate bodies. However, it is the immediate past life that most emphatically affects the beginning growth state here. If that earth lifetime was homosexual in orientation, it will enter here the same way. Since our bodies aren't designed for sexual activity, only the mental aspect of the orientation accompanies the arriving soul. The immediate past earth lifetime has another impact upon this issue. The people there who most vehemently denounce homosexuality are those whose souls experienced an immediate past lifetime as a personage with that orientation. Matthew, that doesn't make sense to me. I'd think understanding and acceptance would be much more likely. It's a complex and confusing psychic situation, mother. The energy of the personages is still fractured from their immediate previous life experiences. At the extreme. Homosexuals have been physically tortured and even killed, and at the least they have been maligned, often even by their families, to such extent that their psyches were severely damaged. Maybe they lived with the pain of denial or shame or the guilt of deception. Whatever their experience, their energy has not healed enough for them to see the very same sorts of traumatic situations they themselves experienced and thus feel empathy. Rather, they see revenge opportunities. The cycle of experiencing happens so quickly that the pain of memories most recently known, but hidden from consciousness, is with them too closely for the healing that will come in subsequent lifetimes. The lingering pain and the suppressed memories of those souls who in this lifetime chose heterosexual nature causes their extremely antagonistic attitudes toward homosexuals. Those painful feelings will not surface in the form of memories of their homosexual lifetime experiences, but in attitudes to stifle the memories. This is the universal like attracts like principle. When the feelings resulting from harsh or unjust treatment in any situation are recent and intense, similar feelings are attracted to that soul. Suppressed memories subconsciously know the source and recall it, thus attracting like. However, the current lifetime's psyche cannot consciously know that the attraction is of shared feelings and the painful sensations of the suppressed memories take over. Moving forward from that point in the psychic labyrinth comes in the process of life print review, identification of karmic lessons still to be learned, choosing the next lifetime, and progress in spiritual awareness. Do people who were homosexual in their immediate past lifetime always go through what you described, which would seem just to perpetuate things, or is there some leveling out point where all of us will accept each other just as we are? The leveling out most assuredly is part of the divine plan, because feelings of prejudice and hatred and the infliction of emotional and physical cruelty are impediments to spiritual growth. However, even with the acceleration of light being beamed at your planet to dispel the negativity abounding in humankind, please do not expect this change to be completed within the next generation. Is homosexuality more prevalent now than previously in Earth history? No but there are more people now than previously in your recorded history, so the same percentage creates the greater numbers. 
throughout your recorded history well-known and highly respected masters in one field or another have been homosexual, and many produce their brilliant and inspiring creations because of their tormented minds regarding this aspect of their nature. You could say that without this element of their personage, they may not have been driven to create in the magnitude and splendor they did. Why is homosexuality a necessary experience? How better to learn balance in the two extremes of male and female sexual energy than on an integrated basis? The ideal is androgyny, which has nothing whatsoever to do with human sexual nature, but rather with the two opposites of human sexual energy attributes. Androgynous souls are far more spiritually advanced because of the male and female sexual energy balance they have achieved. Just as male energy is not the province of only male humans, female energy is not confined to female humans. Male energy is harsh, often productive by ruthless means, always needing to prove a point or achieve success in a venture. Female energy is gentle, yet with greater, quiet strength as its foundation. Interconnectedness, which is the ultimate in conscious achievement, is female energy. In relationships wherein one partner has only male energy traits and the other has only female energy traits, the female energy partner cannot withstand the imbalanced lifelong or the life will not be long. In my awareness of such relationships, those which remained in that imbalance ended in early transition of the female energy soul. The survivor often has no frame of reference of his or her involvement in the partner's death. You say that person or you will be the death of me. Like many other common expressions you use, that can be an accurate statement, but few understand the truth of their words. No blame is attributed here to either partner in such a relationship, as in many instances this is no more than karma being fulfilled according to pre-birth agreements. The dissolution of those partnerships by divorce also may be in accordance with the chosen lessons of their agreements. Any balance within a lifetime is desirable. However, since sexual energy is one of the most essential aspects of the human psyche, the balance of male and female energies is probably the most desirable. In this realm there is that blending of male and female energies insofar as tendencies, sensibilities and sensitivities. That ideal state of balanced reality once existed on earth, but it was corrupted. Behaviors stemming from the perversion of the sexual energy stream have proliferated negativity on earth in such proportions as to be almost unimaginable. By no means is sexual energy confined to what you commonly call wanting sex or having sex. Although extending beyond the original intent of the sex drive, which was procreation, a satisfying sexual relationship brings harmony into the lives of loving mates and I definitely am not speaking against a mutually pleasurable, beneficial sexual union. Furthermore, it is possible to transmute sexual energy into other productive avenues, and many who have lost or never had loving mates, do so. But I am not addressing the positive use of this energy, only the rampant negativity created by perversion of the entire sexual energy stream. This has been the root cause of all that you think of as evil attributes in human nature. There is no crime by your civil, religious or philosophical standards that is not committed from a root cause of sexual energy perversion. As an example, satanic worship involving the torture and sacrifice of human and animal lives and brutal sexual activities prevails on the scale that would beg disbelief, but is real. This is cloaked under the guise of religion, and your government officially recognizes it as such. You do not connect either those ungodly practices or their religion status with the perverted use of sexual energy that it actually is. It shouldn't surprise you that often murder is sexual energy directed into gross deviance, or that rape and incest are other examples. Promiscuous sexual encounters or obsession with either having sex or rigidly refraining from natural urges are more benign, but still destructive to the psyche. The dark forces are behind all these behaviors resulting from perverted sexual energy. It is not uncommon for the most corrupted activities to lead to the basest of dense energy, and no other aspect of human nature has been so pivotal in alienating a person from God. At soul level there is inseparability, but in physical life, 
the more corrupt and deviant the sexual energy, the more the people engaging in those activities are distancing themselves from God. Sadly for you and earth, these free will choices are rampant in your civilization and far from the chosen missions in most of the soul's pre-birth agreements. Mother, however viewed by many on earth, a loving homosexual partnership is not a perversion of sexual energy, and that brings us back to your question about homosexual unions in this realm. Since there is no condemnation here of people's former sexual orientation, clearly there is no judgment regarding which souls are attracted to each other as mates. Experiencing here on every level is designed for the soul's spiritual evolvement, and that includes all unions. Whether heterosexual or homosexual in nature, the soul level energy and bonding commitment of all couples is totally respected. Thank you, Mother. As you continue your journey toward increasing spiritual and conscious awareness, know that you are being assisted by the planet's highest vibrations in many millennia. And you have the unconditional love, respect and admiration of all lighted beings in this universe. Love and Peace Suzanne Ward www.matthewbooks.com